Hello everyone, in a previous video we discussed why the Tubular Quad version 6, my custom drone frame design, was a failure and it has been out of commission ever since, but today it is finally time for the Tubular Quad to start its big comeback because I have designed the Tubular Quad version 7 and we're going to go over all of the nerdy design details in this video. So consider yourself warned, this will be a nerdy, in-depth video, but I think you should stick around because you're gonna get some insight into why I make the decisions that I make, and hopefully you'll pick up on some of the lessons that I've learned through creating seven iterations of this design. And you may want to pay extra attention because for the first time in Tubular Quad history, you will be able to buy kits to build this frame. So without further ado, let's hop into CAD and get nerdy. All right, so let's walk through this design. I'm going to try to explain my reasoning for the major design decisions, and then also explain and highlight the changes between the previous version, the version six, and this current version that we're looking at right now. So let's start with the geometry of this frame. The overall geometry is the same. It is still a true X design with some space between all of the props. The true X geometry is to try to get a similar feeling pitch and roll axis given that this is a freestyle quad i want very similar feel across all axes and the space between all the props gives the props cleaner airflow and that helps avoid some weird tuning issues and inefficiencies with the propellers the fuselage is quite short and the battery goes on toilet tank style or sideways and that is to get a lot of the mass in a very small area in the middle of the quad to reduce the moment of inertia of the quad, which helps increase the responsiveness of the drone. All right, let's talk more about the details of the design and we'll start from the outside and work our way inwards. So let's start with the arms. And the arms are actually made out of three pieces bonded together in various ways. So this pink plate here is where the motor actually mounts. You can see we have some clearance here for the shaft, depending on the motor design. And then these two holes on the outside are where the motor screws go. So yes, I'm only using two motor screws. I could have added the other two positions, but that would require drilling holes in the tube itself, which actually creates quite significant stress concentrations. And I wanted to avoid that so that I wouldn't have to add extra material and extra mass at the ends of the arms where you really don't want extra mass being added. You can also see this purple plate kind of has these two flanges. So you actually wrap carbon toe around the flanges and the teal tube here, and then soak the carbon toe in laminating resin. And that provides a much stronger joint between the plate and the tube. And that's kind of the hardest part about using tubes in a drone is getting a flat spot to mount the motor. So this is how I've solved it using epoxy, laminating resin, and carbon toe. It's a very lightweight way to do it, and it's worked well for the previous few versions, so I haven't changed it at all for this version. You can also see at the end of the arm, we have this notch here in the teal tube. That is for the motor wire. So the motor wires actually kind of go outwards from the motor, slide through that notch, through the middle of the tube, all the way to the middle of the fuselage. And the benefits of running the motor wires through the tube are they are very well protected. It is extremely hard to cut a motor wire when it is in the middle of the tube. And it also makes the arm both visually and aerodynamically much cleaner. Now the reason why I have this notch is so that there is some actual structure protruding past the motor wires themselves to protect the motor wires. Looking at the other side of the arm, you can see this yellow tube here. This is essentially a doubler. So this doubler exists to add more material around these holes where the arm interfaces with the rest of the fuselage. And the reason for that is as you move further inwards, assuming like a impact to the end of the arm, the moment increases and therefore the stresses also increase. Furthermore, there are additional stress concentrations around these two holes because all of the load needs to go through these holes into the screws. So that's why I've added this doubler. Now, this doubler is only about 30 millimeters long and that's because I only need to add material in those locations that have high stresses. I didn't want to add extra material where it isn't needed 
for the rest of the arm. So this keeps the weight down while also making the interface between the arm and the fuselage strong enough. All right, let's keep working our way inwards and talk about that interface between the arms and the fuselage. So you can see that this maroon main plate kind of has these protrusions out from the rest of the fuselage, and that is to get this screw location further outwards. So basically we're trying to increase the distance between these two screws because that actually reduces the forces and therefore the stresses on those screws and those holes. So that way we actually don't need to add as much material and we can save some weight by making sure that the loads on those holes aren't too large. You can also see that there is this main plate and then also this X plate on the bottom of the quad, kind of making the sandwich, which is a very solid structure. You see this kind of style of mounting the arms on pretty much all frames with individual arms. And that is because it's very strong. So we're not doing really anything fancy with that. However, this is one of the main changes between the version six and the current version. The X plate actually used to be where the main plate is now and the main plate used to be on the very bottom of the quad and the standoffs used to be 35 millimeters long, which is very long. The problem with that was because the standoffs were so long in a front end collision, the top plate would basically move backwards all the standoffs would bend backwards and this middle standoff would hit the stack and damage the stack. So this is the biggest structural change in the new version seven. I've swapped with the position of the main plate and the X plate and I've made the standoffs a lot shorter. That way the top plate has much less leverage on the standoffs and the bottom plate. So that reduces the moment on the bottom plate and all of the stresses in most of the areas between the top and bottom plate. And just for extra insurance, I also added two additional standoffs in the rear of the quad. More places for the load to get transferred from the top plate to the bottom plate to again try to prevent the top plate and all the standoffs from deflecting backwards and breaking things. Now another detail about this maroon main plate is of course there are cutouts to save weight, but these two triangular cutouts right near the arms is actually a spot where you can pass the motor wires from the ends of the tubes up into the fuselage and therefore you can reach the stack. Now another requirement I had for this design was to support all the latest digital transmitters and this ended up dictating a lot of the design and pretty much everything that I'm going to talk about from now on. So the version 6 had support for the Cadex Vista just barely but I believe the Cadex Vista is actually smaller than a lot of the newer digital transmitters. And because I swapped the position of the main plate and the X plate, that actually decreased the amount of volume on the inside of the fuselage. So I had no choice but to make the rear of the fuselage a little bit longer. So I really did not want to extend the rear of the fuselage because that adds weight, but I, I had to extend it at least a little bit to fit all of the digital transmitters. Now to help negate some of that weight gain, you can see I have a very generous antenna cut out for your one or two video transmitter antennas. So that was a little cheeky thing I did to try to keep the weight down. And the weight of this drone is only about two grams heavier than the version six. And with all the additional versatility that I'm about to go over, I think it is a worthy trade. Speaking of versatility, how do I fit digital transmitters in this very short fuselage? Well, I actually have two different configurations of the fuselage. So this current configuration we're looking at is the analog configuration. You just put your stack right in the middle of the quad and then you have plenty of room in the front for your camera, plenty of room in the rear for your receiver and video transmitter. Now for the digital setup, I actually have a different standoff configuration with six standoffs, two in the front, two in the middle, two in the rear, instead of the seven standoff configuration for the analog configuration, which has two in the front, uh, three in kind of the middle, and two in the rear. You can also see for the digital configuration, there are two extra press nuts towards the front, which allow you to shift the 20 by 20 M3 stack forwards, and that opens up the rear of the fuselage for your big fat digital video transmitter. So you can see now there is plenty of room in the rear for whatever digital transmitter you may have. And to help secure your transmitter or even a stack if you wanted to, there is a 20 by 20 
M2 bolt pattern in the rear of the fuselage. So one of the coolest things about the version seven is having these two different configurations and having these extra mounting options. So there's a lot more flexibility with the way you can now build the tubular quad. So those are a lot of the design decisions and changes I've made for the tubular quad version seven. And the biggest thing I'm excited about is you will actually be able to buy this frame as a kit either right now or in the near future, depending on when you're watching this video. Now, if you buy the tubular quad version seven kit, you will have to do all of the bonding steps for the arms. So bonding the motor mount plate on top of the tube, bonding the doubler inside the tube, and then wrapping the motor mount and tube in carbon tow and soaking that in laminating resin. Now I know there's definitely people out there that don't want to deal with all of these extra bonding steps and they just want that more traditional build experience, bolt something together and get in the air. So for you guys, I have the non-tubular tubular quad, which the only difference is that instead of the tubular arms, we have five millimeter thick carbon plate arms like all the other frames out on the market. And I've added some protrusions to help protect the motors. So this will still get you about 90% of the performance of the tubular quad. It's still Truex with space between the props. It's still got a short fuselage with a toilet tank battery to give you a really responsive moment of inertia. It's just not gonna have the clean motor wires, the better aerodynamics, the better strength, stiffness, and lower weight of the tubular arms. So I'm really excited for you guys to be able to buy both of these kits. Congratulations, you survived all of the CAD. I hope you learned something from this video or maybe even found it entertaining. If you did, please give the video a like and let me know in the comments if you enjoyed the nerdier video or if you thought it was maybe a little too nerdy. I'm curious to know. Either way, the next video is gonna be a lot more fun because we're actually going to be assembling the tubular quad version seven. So make sure you're subscribed so that you don't miss that. And again, these kits will be or already are available for sale depending on when you're watching this video. So make sure to check them out. Consider buying one. It is a really great way to support the channel. And it's currently the only way to support the channel where you actually get something physical in return for your money. So I would greatly appreciate if you go check out those kits. And I hope to see you in the next video where we put this thing together. Thanks for watching.